Well, good morning. Were you there when they cried? Little, little different this morning. As most of you know by now, we lost mom last night. Mom passed away uh, about 5.45. About 5.45. Uh, I guess she hadn't been feeling well the last few days, and uh, uh, but carrying on. She, I was telling somebody this morning, she's been sick for, what, 30 years? Couldn't hardly tell. She had diabetes, heart problems, hantavirus, malaria, chicken pox. I don't know what all she had. And Jerry said, and on top of that, she had me. So she, she had a lot, of, a lot of issues she's been dealing with through the years. But uh, as I understand it, she wasn't, wasn't feeling great, but she'd cooked for you guys, right? She cooked. You guys were about to eat, and Eddie and, and Dad were over there, and Lauren had been talking to her, and uh, uh, Lauren walked out and went home, and we live next door, right? And Dad was walking in just as Lauren was, was leaving, and uh, within, my goodness, just what, a minute or two, I guess Dad, Dad gave uh, Lauren a call that Mom was feeling a little rough, and uh, so Lauren came back and, and checked on her, and... Uh, I guess you guys decided to call paramedics right then, I guess, and kind of kind of get the ball rolling, and uh, Lauren ran back to the house for oxygen, and uh, uh, baby aspirin, yeah, and uh, uh, by the time she got back, it, it looked like uh, mom had already slipped away. Um, paramedics got there fast, fast. They were there fast. Uh, Lauren was on the phone with them while she was running back home to... Uh, to get the stuff, and, and they worked on mom for quite a while. And, uh, but uh, she slipped away about 45, 545 last night. Uh, what, did, what did the writer of Ecclesiastes say? There's a time for everything. There's a, there's a season for every activity under the heavens. There's a time to be born and a time to die. Uh, we know that dying is a part of living, but... Ouch. Ow, when it happens, mom was born April 10th, 1931. And uh, did we have any idea yesterday morning that that would be, that would be the day? Um, she loved talking to you guys. I thought that for a minute, dad, dad brought his four-wheeler. He brought his ATV in his, uh, and uh, had it there. I thought maybe you were saving her a place or something, but... Uh, she loved you guys. She she loved the way you you baby her. I think it's kind of what you didn't do that to me. You kind of hover around her there. If you did something like that with me, I I would think more. I don't know. Like I was about to be attacked, or it's going to be another intervent, not another intervention, but an intervention. But you all would just kind of circle around her over there and just love on her, and talk to her, and I think it's kind of sweet. I would I would kind of watch Dad when you guys would leave. They'd have to leave in chunks. So they get ready to leave, and, 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 it's, and it's like, you know, telling the kids, we're going, we're going, we're going. Half an hour later, we're going. So dad would leave, and he'd leave, and he would get in a hurry. He'd leave, and he'd leave, and, and she'd, she'd make her way through. And I don't know if you all were stopping her to talk to her, or she was just stopping to talk, but she loved it. She just loved talking to you guys. You made her feel really special. You really did. Um. Uh, I don't know, what'd you call her? Mrs. Chavez? Mom? What'd you guys call her? Mom? Mom? What'd you call her? Mussy. <laughs> she was, when my kids were growing up, she was grandma, and, and uh, so when, when my sister's kids, when Berta's kids were, were little, uh, yeah, they couldn't say, Grandma and Grandpa, so I guess that's kind of where Ma, Grandma, and then Ma's house, Ma's, Ma's C, came, and, and they were calling you Pops, right? So for a hundred years, they were Grandma and Grandpa all of a sudden because the new grandkids came, they're Mussy and Pops. <laughs> so we had to learn a whole new language for Mussy and Pops, but uh, Mussy really liked being called that, so you guys are sweet, calling her Mom, calling her Miss Chavis, Sweetheart. Sweetheart, that's what Dad called her always. Sweetheart, 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 sweetheart. Um, I can't tell people what she used to call you because half of them were. No, it's sweet. Loving names. 
I can remember every once in a while she'd, she'd sing to him. She'd just sing little, little parts of songs, just little parts. And uh, I can remember we were living in California, so I couldn't have been two, three years old, something like that. As I recall, I was, I was in the bathroom. Who knows what I was doing? And I'm looking at myself in the mirror, I, I don't know, at two or three or four years old. But I couldn't have been very old. I just remember being in the bathroom, and, uh, and uh, I heard somebody come in the house, and I got scared because I heard my mom say, Who's that stranger in my home? But she said, Who's that stranger in my home? Who sang that song? Uh, Ernest Tubb or... Yeah. Who's that stranger? But then she was just saying, hi, hi, honey. I'm glad you're home. Um, show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You've made my days a mere hand breath that long. The span of my years is nothing before you. Everyone is but a... A breath. James said our life is just a vapor. Yeah, just like the like the like the steam that comes off a teapot off a, a coffee maker, huh? Everyone is but a breath. Even those who seem secure, even those who, who seem to be strong and healthy and have everything under control. And again we joked, uh, you know, mom mom really had she had some some pretty serious issues for years and years and years, but Man, you'd never really know it. When Dad got so sick a year ago, you were in the hospital this time last year. Huh? When, when Dad came home, uh, had to learn how to walk all over again. And uh, I remember just, just a, a year ago, just a, a couple of days before, he, I, I say it like this all the time, but it was so clear in my mind, he, he, he couldn't pull the... Dad couldn't pull a sheet to cover his foot. Couldn't hold a cup. And uh, he fought back. And we don't need to go to rehab. My goodness, we've got a doc living next door. And we've got 45 of us from the family living right around. We're in a little Chavez commune. So instead of going to rehab, he came home and watching mom take care of him. I'm not kidding. It's like, you know, you would, you would expect taking care of somebody. You would age 10 years. I, I used to joke. It's like she got 10 years younger watching her take care of him. Uh, how does he say? He took care of me like a little baby. She was up at night. She was up in the morning. Um, they, uh, <laughs> they, they sleep all over the house. All, all the time I was growing up, Dad worked at GE, and, uh, and, and they had a, a store, and he always had two or three jobs going on. And I think I, I mentioned last week, I think, that he loved working graveyard shift because he was making money when everybody else was sleeping. And... Uh, He'd get home about 7 in the morning, have cornflakes with us, lay down on the floor in the den and camp out. That's what he called it. He wouldn't sleep in the bedroom because there was no action going on in the bedroom. Couldn't hear what was going on. So we'd sleep on the floor. Mom would vacuum around him and, you know, keep the TV on. And he'd hate it if the, somebody turned the TV off. And, but uh, now as they got a little older, they still slept all over the, the house. And so I was, I was joking with Dad last night. It, it's starting to get cold. It's starting to get winter. And... And they go to their, their, their winter bungalow, which is generally instead of sleeping in their comfortable bedroom, uh, mom set up a, a place, a, a bed in the den. And uh, if dad's sleeping on the floor, he's sleeping on his chair, he's sleeping in the bed, he's fine wherever. So there over this last year that dad was so sick, he, his place was the recliner there next to the bed that's in the den, right? And... Uh, we were teasing her because the bed is as big as this room, I think. And, but she'd sleep on a little corner, yeah? So if there's a, a huh? With a big pillow. With her big pillow. So she's on the bed here, and Dad's recliner is there. And Dad's facing this way, and the, you slept with the TV on all the time, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, Mom became something of, a, something of a political junkie here this last year. She hated Trump, but she wouldn't miss a minute, man. And so they slept with Fox News or CNN on all night long. And bless Dad's heart, he's so sick. He'd wake up with nightmares of Trump. <laughs> and it was worse when he'd wake up, Mom would reassure him, no, it was no nightmare. You heard, you heard the right thing. But anyway, uh, Dad is in his recliner here, and he'd need help at night or in the, you know, during the day. And Mom would sleep with her, with her head up there, right? And her little feet right here. 
and dad's recliner there. And she slept like that so that she could keep an eye on him. In the middle of the night, he'd tug on her little toe. No, you didn't want to scare her. You'd tug on the blanket next to her little foot, her robe. <laughs> Every once in a while, she'd holler, Are you awake? What would you say, no? <laughs> no, I'm not awake, but it's too early for coffee. These guys party more than anybody I've ever seen in my life. They get up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I think he used to take a break when he was working graveyard. I think he used to have a break at 2 o'clock in the morning, didn't you? And so for all the, he's been retired for 15 years, 20 years, 20 years, and he still takes a break at 2 o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> he'll wake up, they'd have coffee. When would you guys have jelly and toast at 4? You guys are messed up. You guys aren't going to last another 20 years like this. Mom's 85 years old. She, I'm not kidding you. It's like she got 10 years younger. 75 is pretty young. Younger than 85. huh? You're watching her take care of Dad, watching them tease each other. And who called who on the phone one night? Did you call her? Or did she call you on the phone? Yeah. Then she'd over in the over <laughs> Guess she'd roll over on the remote control. <laughs> I remember one night she's there, and, and Dad made sure she had a phone close by. Connie would make sure she had a phone close by if she needed anything. Dad had his cell phone close by, and I don't remember he needed her or if she wanted to talk to him. But they were calling each other on the phone. They were six inches away from each other. They spent. Uh... <laughs> You guys were together 63 years. Well, married 63 years. At school? Dad would show up for school once in a while. He worked the ranches in Magdalena, Socorro, I guess, and would show up for school once in a while. And 11 years old, what grade would that have been? Third, fourth, fifth? Right next to you? Yeah. Did you talk to her? No, I didn't. I was very shy. A little shy? <laughs> Sat next to her for a while in school. They lived next door to each other, a couple of houses down from each other on, uh, on Santa Fe Street growing up. And as I understand it, Dad was a little bit shy growing up. Can you imagine Dad at a loss for words? And uh, did, you, did you write her notes? You were writing her love letters, notes early on, weren't you? Yeah. Something of a romantic, that guy. James says, Why when you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow? Why do you say tomorrow I'm going to do this and tomorrow I'm going to do that? What is your life? You're a, you're a mist. You appear for a while and then you vanish. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we'll live. Or tomorrow we'll do this or we'll do that. Even if you're 85, is our life still a mist? Yeah, it is. It's, it's not that 85 is not a long time, but in the grand scheme of things, God says our life is that much. It's that much. It's that much. <laughs> Mom loved being here, huh? What songs did, what, what did she tell you she liked, Becky? What? Oh, how I love, oh, how I love Jesus. She loved all the, the old church songs. Yeah, she wasn't too thrilled with any of the new stuff, but she liked that old stuff. You'd have thought she'd grown up in a Baptist church or something. She, she didn't, but she liked those old, those old hymns, huh? Yeah, she liked that old stuff. Every once in a while when, when I'd finally play something, play something old, I, I like that, she'd say, or that was pretty. So I'd tell her, I'll be, sure, I'll be sure not to do that one next week. Yeah. Don't boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what a day may bring. Isn't that the truth? Huh? We have no idea what's going to happen this afternoon, tonight. Uh, Mom was just plugging away. They were doing their things. Dad gets up in the morning and goes to feed the horse. And Connie makes it on over and gets her medications ready and makes sure that they have the right stuff and makes sure they don't take each other's medicine or they don't take morning and afternoon at the same time or... Sometimes I think they wouldn't take it just to throw you off. Dad would throw one on the floor just to see if you'd catch it. Connie would make sure they'd have the right meds in the morning and 
come back in the afternoon, early evening, make sure they had their meds, and she's been doing that forever. Mom was kind of sick for being in such good shape. My goodness. We kept her going for a long time, Con. I was watching videos last night of uh, uh, Dad was so sick, came home and fought his way back. Uh, Connie and Mom just chugging away. Uh, Mom would, get up, walk, get out of that bed. What did she tell you one time finally? Get up off of that chair. Get up straight. She was rough on him. The guy, the guy, the guy was, you know, half dead. I, I was looking at him, and, and she get up. She almost willed him back to get up out of that chair. I was watching videos. He, uh, you know, Dad takes care of you know a couple acres back there, and he's got his horse. He's got his projects. We talked about in the last couple of weeks, and he got him a golf cart. That old ratty one, that first one. <laughs> you liked that older too, didn't you? <laughs> He loved it. He said, I think he said he looked like him. He was pretty beat up. <laughs> he was in pretty bad shape. But uh, I was watching old videos of you and Mom cruising in the golf cart. I remember the first time they, they, they left home in the golf cart. They went on a date. They went all the way down the street. They went from the house. How, how far is Powers Way? It's like 200 feet. You know, it's <laughs> I mean, more drive. They drove all the way to Powers Way and made a little stop there. And came on back. Mom said she'd be back before. No, she didn't. She threatened that she wouldn't be back till the morning. I said, don't be late. She said you'd be back in the morning. Her face said, I'll be back when I want to be back. Was... <laughs> Dying is part of living, but wow. Look at that little girl. How old was she there, Dad? Remember that rock, anybody, in front of Tingley Field? by the zoo is that rock is that baseball still at the new place yeah, I don't remember the is it at the sports stadium at the new place isotope park mm -hmm. you won't even say isotope well, you hate it so much <laughs> they're still the Dukes or the Dodgers who are they the Dukes they're still the Dukes to you huh mm -hmm. yeah look at those kids how old were you there dad 21. You were back from Korea already, right? 25. Ooh, you are old already. When Dad was 25, he was already 50, I bet. Our days may come to 70 years, the psalmist wrote. Maybe 80 if our strength endures. Mom was 85. Dad's 86. She would have caught up in April. Is that the way that would work? She's always a little behind. Our days may come to 70 years or maybe 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of our days are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. The Bible talks a lot about, a lot about preparing, a lot about dying. Huh? It talks about uh, flying away. It talks about uh, taking down this tent. Uh, the Bible says our life is a vapor. It's a breath. Our life is short. It, it's, it's here. It's, it's there. And then the psalmist writes, So, Lord, because our life is so brief, because we have no idea, 70, 80 years, 85 years, but, Lord, the fact that our life is not, it's there on this earth, and then we go through the doorway of death and we go somewhere, but because our days are but a, a mist, a vapor. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. What does it mean to number our days? Uh, I remember Lauren uh, bringing a talk. Uh, and she told a story that uh, I think she used uh, for a, a cousin who had passed away, and she did a funeral service for him about a, uh, a guy who realized that he was... Uh, at some point going to die, and uh, he uh, took a look at, uh, what are they called, actuaries, to kind of look at life expectancy. He was, he was a certain age, and, and at his health and his age, he would live to that, and, and he went and he bought uh, marbles, I think, 
and he bought a marble for every, if, if, if his life expectancy was another 30 years or 40 years from that point in his life, he, he bought a, a, a bunch of marbles. Uh, one marble would represent a week. And he put all the marbles in a jar. And I think she did when, when Lauren brought this talk. I think you had a I think the jar is still, still here full of marbles. And he bought a marble for what the, what the statistics would say, that he would, he would live out the rest of his days. Each marble would be a week. And on Saturday, I think, on the weekend, at the end of the week, he would take a marble and he would get rid of it. Because that, that marble was the last week that he had just lived. And he's not going to be able to do anything with that. And he would look at the jar of marbles, and, and if everything is normal, that's how many marbles he has left. Uh, Lauren did the funeral for uh, this, this cousin who had passed away, and he was 19 years old. You know, and I remember her asking the question, how many marbles would he have had left in, in his jar? You know, you don't expect a kid to pass away at 19. And I don't know, when we get older, when, when we get old... 62, pretty young, pretty old, 85, pretty old, pretty young. I heard a guy uh, on the phone, it was another pastor, and he took a call while we were talking. And uh, I, I guess the person on the other end was having kind of a rough time, and, and, and he asked a question. I, I just never heard it. Like It was just kind of in jest, but he asked, well, how old would we be if we didn't know how old we were? How old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? Yeah. I mean, how old do you feel? That's another way to put it, huh? <laughs> some of you are probably worse off than you look, and you look kind of rough. But Some of us aren't nearly as old as we are. You know what I mean? How old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? Do you feel like you're in your 20s, 30s? Feel like you're in your 60s? Do you feel a couple hundred? Eric looks pretty rough. He's already creaking over. You can't hardly just... As soon as I started talking, he started stretching. Like, how old did you be if you didn't know how old you were? Lord, teach us to number our days. Our days may come to 70, 80 years if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Lord, teach us to, teach us to, to think through the fact that this day may be my last. Tomorrow may be my last. The day after tomorrow might be my last. Lord, teach me to number my days that I might gain a heart of wisdom. God, help me look at life the way you want me to look at life. God, help me see what you see. I mean, my goodness, when, when we're young, or, or maybe not just so much when we're young, but we're young and, and you know, you, you get married and survival is the name of the game. How am I going to buy groceries and how am I going to buy gasoline and, you know, how, how am I going to get by? And, and, if, and if you're lucky, it's a good Bible word, isn't it? Lucky. If you're lucky, you get to the place where you can move beyond survival a little bit and, and you have a little bit of success where you can buy groceries and gasoline. You still have a dollar fifty in your pocket. And uh, then if you can, or if you're just crazy like Dad, you, you, keep, you keep thinking through, what, what could I do? What if... And Dad was always trying to move beyond survival to success and beyond success to that place where, where you can actually make a difference. And that's what I watched growing up with Dad and, and with Mom. All people are like grass. and Their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The, the grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Uh, God, my days are numbered. Help me get closer to you. God, life is short. Help me get closer to you. God, I have no idea what, what's going to happen this afternoon or tomorrow. Lord, uh, help me get closer to you. Because the only thing that will last, the only thing that's true, God, God's word. Um, our Mormon friends believe that, that we were in existence before we were born. That's not what the Bible teaches, but... Uh, the Bible does teach that after our birth and after our life, there is something called death. Yeah? And, and death is not, it's over. Death is not just turning out the lights. There are euphemisms in the Bible. Uh, 
uh, death is sleep, um, death is, is leaving, but the Bible teaches, looking at the full picture of God, death is a doorway. It's like that door that you came in through. It's like that door there. Death is a doorway for, uh, for mom. We can look at five or ten minutes of, I, 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 don't, I don't feel great. I don't feel so good. Uh, she went out to the porch to catch her breath and came back in to sit down. And then she lied. She lay down. And she passed away. And we can look at that as, as short. Uh, Dad said he was grateful that she didn't linger, that she didn't suffer for a long, 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 long agonizing time. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of hung up on these things. What is long? What is short? How long is, how long is sick? Again, she was, she was in rough shape for a long time, but you wouldn't know it. And she didn't really, you know, make a big deal of it. Maybe she did to Connie. Connie was her crime partner. Yeah. Did she ever complain to you? <laughs> they just talk about everything. Shoot, if you want to know secrets, I bet she's got the dirt. I bet Connie knows everything there is to know about everything because she hung out with mom all the time. I think it's so funny. Uh, uh, early on, I, I guess, when mom and dad were married, I don't know if dad had said something like, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything for you. I'll die for you. I'll live for you. Just don't send me to the store for bread. <laughs> something like that. So guess who mom would send to the store for bread? Connie. And she'd go and she'd pick up groceries for him. Get st- and no sooner would Connie get home and unload the stuff. Oh, I forgot tortillas. So Connie would have to get back in the truck and go back to the store for tortillas because, you know, uh, she was the good kid. You know, I would say, you're fine without tortillas. Make tortillas. What would you do when you were a kid? That's what I would have said. You forget how, Google it. You can figure out how to make tortillas. Go to the neighbor and steal tortillas. And Connie would take off and she'd go pick up what, whatever mom wanted. And then mom would want to go someplace and Connie would take her. Just say no. Connie was her buddy. Connie was her buddy. <laughs> her crime partner. Her nurse, her medic, her shrink. Jeez. So if you want dirt, I bet she's got it. Whoa, she could probably blackmail me. Come to think of it, we'll talk. <laughs> we want to be ready. Yeah, we we want to we want to make sure that we're ready. I don't even know what that means, except that you know I'm a preacher. I tend to look at things pretty black and white. I tend to look at I tend to look at uh, a successful life, a life of significance is not one that, that, that is necessarily uh, filled with money and filled with comfort and filled with happiness and satisfaction. I, I, I want all that and I want all that for you. But in the grand scheme of things, when life is over and we're able to look back, the things that will be most important won't be, did you have fun? Uh, where did you get to go? What did you get to do? I think the most important things are going to look a little different in the light of eternity. Uh, I mean, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to, to, to know that the things that are important for me in life are to know that uh, people we love and, and care about know Jesus. Because in the grand scheme of things, I want you to be happy, but I want to make sure you get to heaven. Uh, I want to make sure my kids know Jesus. I want to make sure my kids' kids know Jesus. You want to know that when you go to be with the Lord that you see your family there. You're not going to stand in heaven and your family not be there and say, Oh, but didn't I have fun? Didn't I have a great time? Wasn't I successful? You want your family to be there. You want your, the, the, your loved ones to be there. We don't want to be like the person that, that the Lord spoke to who he said, take thine ease. Just eat, drink, and be merry. Just enjoy your life. And the Lord would say to him, you fool, tonight your soul is required of thee. And that person wasn't ready. We want to be ready. Again, you've heard me say this a few times. I just as soon not get on the bus load for this afternoon. But at some point, my number's going to get called. At the DMV, three times, three hours. I was excited when they'd call my number. But the number to get to heaven, 
I mean, I know what the Bible says. I, I, I've given my life to Jesus. I trust Him. I'm, I'm trying to follow Him. And the Bible says that uh, because I'm not trusting in myself and I'm not trusting in my religion, I'm not trusting in, in any good works, if, if there be any, I, I'm trusting Jesus and Jesus alone. He's my only hope. He's my only way. He's my only truth. He's the only life. If I trust Him, the Bible says when I leave this place, I go to be with Him. Uh, Am I living like it? Am I thinking like it? Am I prioritizing like that? It's appointed unto man once to die. But after this, we get to stand before God. Or we have to stand before God. The way God says it is, it's appointed unto man once to die. You go through that doorway and then the judgment. And we want to be ready. I want you to be ready. Dying is part of living, of course it is, but my goodness. Um, who are you going to see when you get there? Who did you see when you walked in this morning? Did you expect to see us? Um, Mom loved meeting new people. She loved talking to you guys. She loved the surprise of meeting someone new. Not me, not so much. Dad likes new people. Mom loved new people. Ah, you're fine. Okay, new people. But I'm, I don't go out of my way to... Hey, how are you? I'm Tony. What's your name? I, you know. Mom loved meeting new people. She just did. She's kind of crazy like that. She loved talking to you guys. Um, any thoughts? You don't have to say anything. Dad, did you want to say anything? She asked a lot of questions. <laughs> Just beyond the moon. We'll meet again just... Who used to sing it? Tex Ritter? Just beyond the moon. Just beyond the moon. We will meet again real soon. One just beyond the moon. You guys used to like sitting on the porch watching the moon too, didn't you? They were like kids. It was disgusting to watch them. Holding hands, kissing. It's ugly to watch old people kiss. <laughs> They'd hold hands. Half the time I couldn't tell if she was helping you or you were helping her. I can remember. I remember for years you would carry a cane and you'd forget who it was for. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was her cane, his cane. Who needs the help? Funny. Well. Mom's gone. We're here. Uh, Dad would tell us, uh, stay strong, uh, pray for each other. Yeah? Get close. Uh, uh, memorial service, uh, probably, we, we've talked some through, through the years. We've talked a lot through the years, but as far as making final, uh, final decisions, we have done that. I haven't done that. Uh, Mom didn't want a, a viewing, so we'll have a memorial service. And um, I would expect, what, middle of the week? Maybe. Okay. We want to make sure that everyone can get here that, that wants to get here. Uh, just so that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know as, as soon as we know. I don't know if, if it'd be convenient to maybe, I don't know, even a Wednesday night or Wednesday night regular, regular service time later in the week. We'll, we'll see. We'll talk. And, but uh, if, if, if you're not on Facebook, uh, of course, I'll have information there on the uh, church site, but uh, you can holler. Feel free to call. You, you all have my number. Um, we'll have the service here soon. Uh, pray for Dad. Keep loving on Dad. I don't know if he likes all that loving like Mom did, but uh, yeah, probably. Baby him. What? 
I think she had nicknames for most of you guys too. <laughs> Sometimes we'll we'll butter Connie up and find out what some, we'll pry some of those nicknames out of her and find out who we were. But uh, going to miss mom. Born April tenth, nineteen thirty one. Slipped away yesterday, December third, about five forty five. Lord Jesus, teach us to number our days. Uh, our life is just a vapor. It's here today. It's gone. But we step through that doorway and we live forever and forever and forever. With your forgiveness, we live in your presence. With your salvation, we live forever with you. We're grateful for that promise. We're grateful for that hope. It's not about anything good in us. It's because we trust you. It's because we lean on you, you alone. God, thank you for mom. Thank you for her, her love. Thank you for her, her perspective, her vision. Thank you for her heart. God, we're grateful that uh, you blessed us through these years with her. God, we want to continue to hold dad up and, and of course the rest of the family. Hold us up. Keep us close to you. And Lord, my prayer in a situation like this as always is, is that you would not only bring comfort and bring hope and bring strength, but Lord, that you would bring us closer to yourself. Lord, for those who, who, who are still on the fence and still don't know you, Lord, I pray that that you would, you would save souls as a direct result of mom's passing. God, that you would bring us not only closer to each other, but closer to you. That we might be forgiven, that we might be saved, that we might have that, that hope that only comes from, from you taking our sins away. And then, God, I pray for, for your direction. I pray, God, that we would number our days now, realizing that uh, whether we live 70 years, 80 years, 85 or beyond, at some point uh, we take down this old tent and we walk through the doorway of death. God, I pray that we would be ready for you. God, help us be ready for you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for taking care of mom. Thank you that she's in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. It's too cold. Do I have to take another bath tomorrow? Is tomorrow a bath day? No. It's not Saturday. Yet. You know, you pulled a dirty <laughs> trick on me this morning, you know. I ordered a t-shirt and what'd you do? Get me a pair of shorts. Okay. <laughs> I was all set. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to get nasty or anything. <laughs> but... I'm proud of my chest. <laughs> I'm glad you are, because from here, it doesn't look that great. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't even have to show that chest to some of the sisters out there. There I was in my birthday suit, trying to find my t-shirt. Hey, little girl, look at my chest. I was looking at myself in the mirror. I'm just I'm starting to get a little muscle. <laughs> I turned side you like a nigga. I mean, they were flat, you know. Come here, be a little pig. I'll take a picture on the truck. The therapist said that a person loses so many muscle pounds of muscle every time you're laying. I laid for five months. <laughs> <laughs> and you've already gained my 20 pounds. <laughs> See, but what happened to the, the real muscle? It's still going. I'll tell you what, that has never slowed down. <laughs> so I want to know what happened to the underwear. Did they fit as a t-shirt? I'll tell you oh, what. Oh, no, he brought them through the, the hallway. And <laughs> I had to come <laughs> in. I'm sitting here in it. <laughs> and that doesn't fit too and, good and, and they're not pretty. Hobbling through the hallway here, and he says, "You give me underwear for a T-shirt." <laughs> yeah, but you know how he wore it. He put yeah. One leg in here, one leg in here. He had the back with his, with his bunny hopper. Listen, you're. Young. 
But you don't know the problems that I that I went through <laughs> but I didn't when get I really seen needed out. help, buddy. I've had I've had pair of pants put on like this. Jesus, well I can't raise up your leg. I couldn't even do it. <laughs> and, 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 and he goes and he lift up the it. leg and I'll show you and I'll help you. I can't. <laughs> so she put on he the wants, pants. He wanted to put his jeans on with his feet like that. <laughs> you, you couldn't get his pants over his foot. Margaret, <laughs> 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 all you had to do is tell him, all right, I got the scissor movement on you, just flip and you'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh Come through here, and this is the result. Well, I don't know if she always had any chest. <laughs> no yeah. t-shirt. No t-shirt. <laughs> the spinsters would <laughs> love you. The things you had to go you through. Know, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. Ah, oh, sometimes it causes 